Hey everyone, in the last video, we were discussing the solution for the burst balloon problem and we solve it using the naive uh, recursion method. And the time complexity for this uh, for that problem using the solution uh, of naive recursion was n multiplied by 2 raised to the power n, which is uh, not good. So in this video, we will take a look at a dynamic programming solution for the same problem and see how uh, dynamic pro programming improves the complexity for the solution, okay? So in the last video, if you remember, the input was 3158 and we added a one at the end and a one at the beginning. So now uh, let's quickly just go over the problem statement once again. And the problem statement says that uh, given an array of balloons, we can pop any given balloon and when we pop the points we will get is the multiplication of these three numbers basically the uh, numbers which are adjacent to the current balloon and the current number and we have to uh, maximize the points so this was the problem and in the previous video we discussed the solution for the uh, naive recursion method so let's uh, see like how uh, dynamic programming can improve the complexity of the problem. Now, before jumping into dynamic programming, let's see, like, uh, is there any other way to break down this problem? Because last in the last video, if you see that uh, the time complexity uh, for, uh, for this problem was n multiplied by 2 raised to the power n. So this means that for every element we are having two raised to the power n states in the problem in the in the solution now uh, what we want to do is this since this is a very uh, uh, expensive time complexity we want to reduce the complexity of this part now uh, if you see like when we were in the last method we were picking one balloon and for the remaining balloon we were calling the sub problem uh, balloons we were calling the sub problem recursively now what this did was this broke down the problem from n by one so by one if you reduce the problem you get a new problem size of n minus one plus whatever you are getting the solution uh, for the current one let's let's call it k and we were doing it n times okay so this is what the uh, what we were trying to do using the naive recursion uh, method. Now let's see is there another way to break down this problem so that we again get the same category of problem. Okay, so now let's take the again let's take the example this one three one five eight and one. Now remember that our original input is from here to here only this part. We have added two other ones just to simplify the problem because uh, if you pop the balloon at the end point there is no other balloon on the right side so that why we added this uh, sentinel balloon <clears throat> okay now if you see that if we pick any balloon let's say let we pick five okay so if we pick five and burst it so now what is happening to the array so if you see like if 5 is not there right let's try to uh, delete 5 so if you see the array gets broken down into two sub arrays now this is 1 3 1 this is one part of the sub array and the other part becomes 8 and 1 so just by busting the balloon if you see we have broken down the problem into two uh, smaller versions of the same problem like now what we want to do here is we want to uh, maximize this part of the array and we have to maximize this part of the array now <clears throat> if we are able to do that then we have the solution using the divide and conquer method now on thinking this uh, problem in a slight more detail you will realize that you were able to successfully do the divide part for this problem but what about the conquer part? How are you going to aggregate the results after you have after the recursive calls come back? So let's discuss the conquer part. So there is one property in the divide and conquer solution 
it is that if you see like any divide and conquer algorithm be it mod sort be it quick sort or any other standard divide and conquer conquer algorithm so the the basic property to apply divide and conquer is that the sub problem should be independent of each other now let's see uh, if the sub problems are independent of each other or not now if you check here like the next balloon if you uh, burst let's say we are going in the left subtree of this recursive solution and now we are picking this balloon for the next burst so what should be the ideal scenario here now the ideal scenario should be that when you are busting five let's say let's consider this case when you are busting five the ideal scenario should be it should multiply the left hand side and the right hand side okay so here we have the left hand side and this is the middle one for the right hand side we have five but if you see what we did is we busted five in the previous step so we have already busted five here so now we cannot bust five here because according to the new state of the array five is not here only since we have already destroyed five you only have three one and eight one and now we want to bust one and we have sub recursively called this so now if you see here that uh, so one needs a balloon from the right uh, hand side of this recursive subtree now if you see that this problem this uh, sub problem right this sub problem requires an uh, value from the solution on the right subtree so that if you see that this problem and this problem in this way if you divide these are not inter interdependent from each other so what that means is we cannot apply divide and conquer solution on this problem so now we have to think of another way to solve this problem okay let's try to look at the dynamic programming solution for this problem now and uh, before discussing that uh, what we have to do is we have to solve this uh, dependency problem between the sub arrays first so if you uh, I, as, as i have already told that the left sub array or the left recursive part of the problem is depending on the right recursive part and usually the best way to solve this kind of uh, dependency problem between the sub problems is that depend on the parent instead of depending on the right half or the other half so here how can we depend on the parent because we are already busting the parent so there are uh, so the usual way to solve this problem will be that we need to assume that when we are solving the problem we are not busting five at once we are marking it that what will happen if five is busted at the end within this range so for this range let's say we have left and we have right what happens when a given element x is busted at the end so now if you see that there are four elements in this uh, array and in dp solutions or in recursive solutions uh, we don't know actually which option will yield to the most opti optimal result and if you see that uh, in the first uh, iteration itself of the uh, sub uh, of the problem we have four possibilities which is three one five or eight so we can pick any number with equal probability and we don't know which one is going to yield the best result so what we are going to do here is pick all of them one by one and at the same time if we see a repeated sub array which we have already solved in this problem we are going to use the solution for that sub array from our cache which will be the memo from for the dynamic programming solution now uh, moving forward on this solution let's say let's take an example that uh, in this uh, 3 1 5 and 8 5 is the last element to be removed uh, from this uh, array of balloons so now what will happen to the sub problems we will be creating two sub problems one will be three and one so this will be one problem and one will be eight okay so we have marked five that we will be busting this 
a balloon later which means we will be calculating the result for this uh, for this fifth element at the end so now just imagine one thing if five is the last balloon which is to be bursted in this sub uh, in this array so at the end only five will be remaining right and to be able to calculate the points for five what was the rule that we have to uh, for any given balloon we have to uh, calculate uh, the points by multiplying the balloon on the left hand side and, and multiplying the balloon on the right hand side now given that all these balloons have been busted let's say three is busted one is busted and eight is busted so now for five what is the which are the two, two balloons which uh, that are on the left hand side or on the right hand side so it's not one and eight it's this one and it's this one so let's say we were trying to solve this problem for this range where this is left and this is right so now if you see that for the fifth uh, for for the five element what are we trying to multiply it so points is equal to let's call this array b b for balloon so balloon for if you want to calculate the points for given element at i points at i so this becomes balloons of left minus one multiplied by balloon of i multiplied by balloon of right plus one so this is how we are going to calculate the points mm -hmm. for the number which will be bursting at the end so let's say for five if this problem and this problem is solved then this is how we are going to calculate the points for five so let's say for five the l was one and the r was four okay so for five what will be the solution it will be b of zero multiplied by b of i so b of five will be five and multiplied by b of r plus one which is b of five so b of 5 so now it is 1 into 5 into 5 because b of 0 is 1 b of 5 is 1 and b of which is what is this index 0 1 2 3 b of 3 is 5 so this will be 5 okay so this is one part of the problem where we are calculating the points how do we add the solution for sub arrays so we looked at the first part of the problem this is part one now let's look at the second part of the problem what is the second part how do we add the uh, or how do we consider the the solution which is coming from the left hand side and the right hand side now if you look at the problem statement or or our function uh, signature what does that mean if i call the function for a left element and a right element in this range this will give me the maximum points I can get by bursting the balloon in the range left and right. So this is essentially giving me the maximum points which I gain if I go in the left side. And since here, if you see, we are going on the both directions. We are going on the left side and we are going on the right side. So now, if all the balloons are already bursted on the left hand side and on the right hand side what do we need to do we need to add we need to add the points we are getting from the left hand side of the problem and from the right hand side of the problem yeah. okay so if we take all the conditions into account to create an equation to solve this function what would that be so we have two elements in the solution the first one is points which we will get after bursting the balloon and then the second part is the solution from left subtree and the right subtree and third part is we don't know ki which of this balloon is going to yield the maximum result so we have to add the result for all them or check it for all the trees so if we are trying to find the solution in the range l and r we have to iterate 
from L and R by marking every balloon once. So let's see, let's say that the iteration uh, element which we will use is I. So now if we want to define this problem, what is the uh, what 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 is the equation? So to even simplify that further or uh, so that you are able to write the equation yourself, let me consider this example 3, 1, 5, 8. And let's give the values to, uh, you know, every uh, thing in this array. So we are trying to solve this for this L and this R. And let's say our I is at 5. Okay. And we want to solve. So if we want to solve for, let's say, L and R, what are the things we need to consider? We are calling this sub problem for the left half which is three and one. So if you try to see what is the L and R value for, uh, for, the, for the left half, so this is the L remains same, but the R becomes, what is this? This is I minus one, okay. So this problem has a sub problem of F of L and I minus one, okay. What is the second part? Second part is just the right half. So if you consider what is the L and R value for this one. So for this one, the L and R value are, if you see this, this is I, then this is I plus one. So I plus one, this is I plus one. And the R value remains the same, so R. Okay, so now we have the uh, two sub problems so this condition is checked now we need to in also include the balloon balloon which is bursted at the end so we have defined it by points and let's say points is a function and if i give it the ith element it calculates this value so instead of uh, let me write it like points for now and I will expand it later. So points of i and points is a function. We will define this. Okay, so this part is also done. How is part one and two related with each other? So if we have already found the maximum points we get from this part and we find the maximum points from this part, all we have to do is calculate the points for this one and add them. So if we add this part, uh, with this part right so we will get the solution for l and r range which where i is equal to 5 basically i points to 5 element 5 now if you see we discussed also that uh, in bp or recursive problems we don't know which element will re yield the maximum result so we cannot only we just don't solve for only one element we can solve for all the elements so which means we have to if we are looking for the solution for range r l and r we have to solve starting from l and considering the current element will be busted last till r so how do we do that we can do that by considering that i goes from l to r now what is the function which we want to compute on every iteration of i it's the max function so we will say max function of this term now to break this down even further how did we define points let me write it here so that it's very clear so points of i points of points of i will be calculated as whatever was the l value so b of l minus 1 multiplied by b of i multiplied by b of r plus one 
so this is how we will be calculating points so if you want to solve this problem using dynamic programming this is going to be the recursive structure of your problem okay now uh, this is only the recursive part we have not included dynamic programming yet so for dynamic programming how do we uh, cache the results so if you see in the original problem how many variable states are there so there are only two variable states okay so that's why you need a cache which has dimension 2 which means uh, if you create a matrix of dimension equal to 2 which means a two dimensional matrix you will be able to store the results for both l and r range this way you will be able to like let's say any at any point in time if you see that uh, the the sub problem is already solved which means that you already you have already uh, found a solution for a given l and r instead of calling the recursive function again with so many uh, functions what you can do is you can just refer to this memo in your table and this will give you the result now this lookup will save some time and hence the solution will become a dynamic programming solution instead of a pure recursive solution let's also try to see the time complexity of this uh, db solution and uh, it's uh, uh, if you remember the the time complexity for the naive recursion uh, solution was uh, uh, n into 2 power n so that was the time complexity for the naive recursion solution and in this solution what we tried to do is we tried to uh, reduce the number of states caused by this part of the problem in the previous solution and if you see that uh, we have uh, reduced this from 2 to the power n to n square now how is it n square let me tell you so the total time complexity will be so time complexity will be so if you see here we are iterating in the range l to r so for the biggest range it will be the size of the array so we have n and then if you look at this part of the solution right so here we are trying to calculate the solution for all the sub arrays in the left half and all the sub arrays in the right half and if you if you see like how many sub arrays are there for a given sub array of size n so that will be n square or in in the complexity of n square so now uh, if we are for every element if we are breaking the array into sub array into all possible sub arrays without that element so we are trying to calculate the solution for the remaining sub arrays so the total time complexity for this solution will be n cube okay if we want to talk about the space complexity for this problem if you remember we have a dimensionality of 2 for this problem so that's why we need a two dimensional matrix to store the results for this problem and if the problem size is n then the number of elements in the matrix will be n square so that's why the space complexity will be n square so now we are going to implement this solution for the top down uh, dp and the bottom up dp as well so let's first start with the top down dp and before that let me just write this uh, uh, let me just write this uh, in the vs code so what we are essentially looking for is that we are looking for max of the things and so okay so for range in l and r what we are looking for is we pick a I. so let me write that we pick an i and what does the uh, equation say so okay for the range uh, uh, in l and r we pick i where i goes from okay so where i goes from l and l to r 
causing the other sub problems and we are having uh, so let's say function of l and r this gives rise to function of l comma i minus 1 plus the solution of function of uh, i plus 1 comma uh, r and the points from the balloons are okay so this is the top down solution so let's quickly uh, create the class for the solution so let's call it solution and let's create a, a main method to initialize the input whatever input we took uh, here so this is 3158 so let's take 3158 so let's call this balloons and this is a new array so let's call this 3 1 5 and 8 and if you remember the solution from the previous video if we solve this problem correctly it should be 167 so let's see if we can achieve 167 uh, from the solution we discussed and uh, okay so let's me create a solution object and we will call solution dot solve with the balloons array this will return a result and finally we will print the result okay so now let's define the solve method so we have the return type as int so int and the solve method is taking the input balloons which is an array so balloons now here if you see uh, we discussed the uh, that we want to add two more ones on the left part and on the right part of the array so for that we let's create a new balloons array and the size for the new balloons array would be uh, two more than the uh, existing balloons so let's say int n is balloons dot size okay balloons dot length plus two now let's initialize the new balloons array okay now we have to copy the uh, existing balloons array into this new uh, new balloons array so for that i am going to use a, a utility method which is system that array copy and here the source arrow will be balloons the source position which uh, will be zero the destination array will be new balloons array so let me pick that and the destination position will be one and the length uh, of the array okay basically this is like up to what length we want to copy the array so this will be balloons dot length all right so now we have uh, copied this array into a new array and we also want to set the sentinel elements as one so let's pick the first and last elements of the array as new array as one okay so now we have new balloons array of zero set as one and new bal balloons array of n minus one is also set as one okay now let's solve for the uh, top down part which is uh, let's call it solve recursively and this will be requiring the input let's call it balloons only and we also want a left part and we also want a right part so this is the this one this l and r and on top of that since this is a, a dp solution so we will also take a result cache so few basic conditions first like if the left becomes greater than right which means we have crossed the uh, sub array range so for this we will return just zero if we already have a result in the cache so which means result of cache is not a zero so we will return result 
cache of left and right and uh, this indexing we also need it here okay now which this is the main part of the solution where we said that for range in l and r we pick i so let's create that range so for int i in uh, left and i is less than right so this is the range where we want to calculate the solution so how many options do we have we have uh, the solution from the left part so int uh, solution from left part this will be uh, the same function which is called recursively with balloons left and here uh, this is i minus 1 and the same result cache we have a solution from the right part as well so for that we will have solved recursively again solve recursively again balloons and this is i plus 1 right and result cache okay now we want to calculate the points from current balloon so points from current balloon now this will be balloons of left minus 1 if you remember this equation we said balloons of left minus 1 into balloons of i into balloons of uh, right plus 1 so that is the exact same thing which we are doing balloons of left plus 1 balloons of i multiplied by balloons of right plus 1 okay now uh, for the final thing we have to take a max so let's put this result in the result cache first so left and right okay so for the final part we are taking the max as described here and uh, here so let's take a max so we want to take a max for the previous value so result cache of left and right and the solution from left part plus the solution from right part plus the points from the current balloon now once we have this at the end what we are going to do is return the result cache of uh, left and right which means we are returning the result for the given range for this for which this uh, sub problem was called now let's call this solve recursive method so solve recursive now here we want to pass the new balloons array so let's change that new balloons array now the left and right if you remember we are solving for so this is the new balloons array and we are solving for this up to here and up to here so this will be if this is 0 then this index is 1 and this index is uh, this is n minus 1 and this is n minus 2 so for this this will be 1 and this will be new balloons okay we already have n minus 2 and the result cache okay the result cache we have not declared yet so let's declare the result cache also so result cache is new uh, int and this will be of size n and n and we want to also return the result so if you see we are creating this result cache for size n and n and if you see uh, the result will be stored at what index so we are starting from 1 and we are ending at uh, n minus 2 so the result will be stored at 1 comma n minus 2 so what we need to return is result cache of 1 comma n minus 2 so now if we run this the solution should be 167 And now you see that the solution is 167 which means we have successfully solved this problem using the top-down solution okay okay now we have seen the top-down version of the DP solution let's see how can we convert 
uh, our this solution which we have written for the top down approach into a bottom up solution so whenever you want to convert a top down solution to a bottom up solution i would recommend you to always first uh, print the cache so let's try to uh, print the cache and see how the uh, dp matrix looks like so let's quickly print that print matrix and we are here getting a matrix and for what we are essentially doing here is uh, print every row and column so we are for every row for every column we are getting that element and the matrix of i j okay so this is how we are going to print the matrix which in our case is the result cats and we are going to observe how uh, the matrix was filled using this equation and whatever the explanation we had from this discussion okay so let's again run this program and if you see this is how the matrix looks like okay now let's have a look at the equation and try to understand that which uh, columns were uh, filled before uh, this uh, one right so this is uh, we are calling the solution for end uh, n uh, is left is 1 and right is n minus 2. So this is our 1 and n minus 2. So if we look at the equation here, this says we have uh, the sub problem which goes from the same left. So if we consider the rows of the matrix which represents the left side and the columns of the matrix which represent the right side of the array. So this says we are on the same left but the right has gone uh, to i minus 1 so let's say whatever the i is right so we are picking uh, i minus 1 so i minus 1 will be on the this hand side so basically we we are in the same row but in a different column which is before the current column that's what i minus 1 means right so for this, we are depending on the solution of the elements which are on the left hand side. Okay, that's part one. Part two is we are also depending on the same uh, column but on the other rows. So, which says i plus one, which means the, the rows which are below this one. So, in the same column, which means the right is fixed and we are looking at the uh, uh, i plus one, which means the left has been. Uh, ported from the its original value to the one on the right side of the current i and that would be uh, the rows which are below the current uh, element in the matrix so which means that if i am at a given uh, let's say we are at a given i and j so we want the solution to be solved for these numbers which are before this i and j on the left hand side and and the exact like on the bottom like whatever the numbers are at the bottom the indexes are at the bottom like this this and this for this we want the solution for these indexes and these indexes like 135 and 40 and all these should be available if you want to calculate the result for at, at this index okay so now it means that if i want to calculate i uh, the solution for i and j I have to fill the elements which are on left hand side and which are on exact uh, downward side of the matrix. So now for this, there are only two ways to fill this. Like if you see that left half of the matrix is zero. Now if we start to fill the matrix diagonally, right? That we fill this these diagonals first. Then we go and fill the this diagonal. Then we again go and fill this diagonal and this. 
so if we fill it on a diagonal wise then we have the result of of all the elements for a current index which are on the left hand side and also for uh, all the elements which are on the exact below or the bottom of the current uh, index so let's see with an example so for 159 if we fill diagonally so we will have filled 3 15 40 40 and 0 and we will also have filled 30 135 48 and 0 and then we come here so we have already filled all the elements on the left side and all the elements at the bottom of this uh, index now let's see how can we convert the a uh, given uh, top down solution now we know that uh, that this is the top down solution and we also know which elements we have to fill first so there are uh, as i told you there are only two ways to fill this matrix either you can fill it diagonally or you can start filling from the bottom so like you fill the bottom of the matrix first then the row above that then the row above that and then the row above that so basically you you will fill the bottom then you will come on the 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 upper row and then you will start filling like this like you go from left to right then you come on the up upper row and then you again go from left to right similarly uh, or you have the diagonal way so in this solution uh, i will show you how you can convert this solution and we will be going we are going to fill this matrix diagonally so this is our top down solution and let's create a uh, copy of this solution first so we are going to convert the same solution into a bottom up solution so let's put it here and let's instead of solving recursively let's name it solve via uh, bottom up dp okay now uh, since we are solving it via bottom up dp we don't need to return anything so either you can keep void or you can just return the result at the end but we already have the logic to return the result here let me close this terminal so you have a better view okay so now we don't need to return anything we have put the return type as void and all these extra corner scenarios are also not required so let's remove these as well okay so left and right since we are not calling it recursively even these parameters are not required so we will be removing this shortly and the result cache is okay we can keep it so the first part to convert any top down solution into a bottom up solution is to replace the recursive calls with the lookups in the matrix so instead of recursively calling for left and i minus 1 we will assume that it was already solved for the problems and the result is already there in the result cache so we basically just instead of calling this sub problem recursively we will just look into the result cache for this problem so let's just look into the result cache for this problem by this lookup so here by this lookup we mean that we are just looking for the solution in the result cache let's do the same thing for this next call also okay so now instead of calling the sub problems recursively we are just looking into the result cache and everything else remains same now how do we simulate what was already happening so if you remember the analysis from the dp table which was here we are trying to fill the uh, matrix in a bottom up manner and in a diagonal basis so for filling the matrix in a diagonal basis if you see this is for 1 1 this is for 2 2 this is for 3 3 this is for 4 4 if you come into this diagonal this index is 1 2 this index is 2 3 this index is 3 4 which means every time on every iteration we are increasing the uh, size of sub array by 1 okay so let's keep this solution as it is and let's try to add the uh, the extra iteration so 
let's see like let's keep n equal to whatever balloons dot length is so we don't have to query it all the time and we are filling it diagonally so and starting for from array of gap one or size one sub array of size one so let's call it uh, gap uh, equal to one and we want to go from gap equal to one to gap of n minus two if you remember in the original problem this is we have added two ones and we want to go till n minus two because array index starts with zero so this is n minus one and this is n minus two so we want to go from gap of one to gap of n minus two okay so we have uh, already set up a gap here okay now what now we know what is the gap value we want to calculate the left hand side and the right hand side of the gap so to calculate the left hand side and right hand side okay so now we want to calculate the bounds for the left and right so how are we going to do that so since we know that the gap is value one now we say that the left starts at the leftmost side every time we are iterating so you know that right if you if you look at this uh, matrix you know every time in every iteration you are starting at this first row so left goes from one okay you have filled it diagonally then you again come to this row and left is again one you fill diagonally you again come to this row so left is one so that's why i have kept left is equal to one okay now till how far we are gonna go so this is the maximum value for left so if we want to reference this element using the gap property how can we do that so if you see the next element this index is n minus one okay and right now if you see the value of gap is one so if we can decrement one more in n minus one we can reach this position okay so now let's try to take left is less than or equal to n minus 1 minus the gap and now since on every iteration we want to increase the value of left that's why we will be increasing left by 1 now we also have to calculate the right hand side of the uh, array so for that let's take the right and the value of right should be whatever the value of left is there plus the gap between the left and right and just for the sake since the array is zero indexed we take left plus gap minus one now if you see we have both the bounds we have the left bound and we have the right bound and since we have already calculated left and right we don't need these two anymore so we are going to remove that and just keep this so now if you see we have successfully converted our solution to bottom of db where we are filling the matrix for the uh, smaller versions of the problem and then making a bigger solution out of that so now let me show you that if i call instead of solving recursively if i call the bottom up version of the same problem this is going to still give me the same result so where is this this is solved by bottom up dp and we don't need this left and right and let's run this so now you see when we ran for the from the bottom up solution as well we are getting the same solution so that's how you convert a top down solution to a bottom up solution you basically copy it you get rid of the sub recursive calls and convert it to the uh, lookup calls in the cache and then whatever you were recursing on on the range you basically try to generate that same range using iteration and just copy this part of the solution inside your iteration once you have uh, got the left and right bounds of that of your uh, solution 
So that's how uh, we basically convert the top-down recursion to a bottom-up, uh, top-down DP solution to a bottom-up DP solution. And this is how you should also structure your code in an interview perspective. And this is how you should explain it. Like uh, every single line, point by point, giving explanations to whatever the solutions you have drawn on the whiteboard. And that's how you should go about it. Okay.